fan of Corbin. You Me know, too. And I, I was. I had a hard time. Like I, I was thinking to myself, if I was there, who would I vote for? And it's a hard vote, and it shouldn't be a hard vote. Like no. I, I like honest, and I'm t- just talking about a feeling thing at this point. Like a um, you know, it's like you know, you I've had some lefties. Like my wife went to vote for Hillary Clinton and felt dirty. Like that type of stuff. <laughs> that type of stuff. But it's it's a feeling thing. Like when you're in sync and you make that vote and you feel amazing about that vote. You know, they asked people for Sanders, and you had like seventy percent of people saying they were energized through the moon, you know, they'll drag with half of their body sliced off in an alien invasion to make that vote for sense. That type of feel where yeah. it's just in sync. Um, this didn't feel that way. This didn't feel that way. And I, I it, and again, this is a feeling thing. Intellectually, it's like, oh God, Bojo's a goddamn liar. You can't put that guy in office. Yeah. By the same token, when you just think about the vote itself. And I've had people who dislike videos because they thought I was being too hard on Corbin or that I was going after him. And I try to make the point to him that it's not that I'm going after him. Yeah. My, my issue here is a philosophical one. It's ideological. You had an election. You have to kind of go that route. And he's moved, like you said, to the right, to the yeah. sides of the people who hated him. And, it's, and it's, I have to be, look, it is very U.S. politics is different than yours. Ours is more cutthroat, I think, to some degree. I'm not sure if that's true right now after seeing what just took place from this. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think I think we just do it we do it so sarcastically. Americans can't understand that we're doing it. Okay, maybe I think we've more... just evolved to a better level level of cutthroat politics. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> just get you guys down understand really what's going on. I mean, John no, Burke. But when John Burko puts you down, he's calling you an idiot. At the same time, you're trying to understand what the fuck did he just say? He said but, to me. I know you. I know you t- attach great weight to what you think. In other yeah. words, you're a fucking pompous prig. But he's done it in such a way that it takes you five minutes to understand. Oh wait a minute, he's it's insulted the fuck done. out of me. Brookow is beautifully done. He is God. He's going to be a mess. I love Brookow. Um I thought he was great. You're right. You're done. It's you're right. It's more refined. It maybe in the UK, like the knife is more refined when they when they shove it in you. Like when the when Boris Johnson first took office or first um, seat in Parliament, and the guy jumped, stout, stood up, and just walked across the aisle. Everybody knew what that meant. There was no yelling and screaming. Everybody knew what just took place. I don't like you. You've just lost your majority. Now suck it. Now the catch here is that Bojo didn't care because Bojo. Yeah. I mean, he cared in the sense that, all right, you're trying to be a dick to me, fair enough. Like, it's sometimes it's not what the person does, it's the intention behind it. It could be anything. It's like the person throws a banana and he looks at you in a mean way. He says, that motherfucker just, you know, threw that banana. But it was more so for Bojo didn't necessarily care. He won an election anyway. Look, I agree with you, man. Even here in the United States, they would rather Trump win than Sanders. Now, if Sanders wins... This notion of being a Democrat changes. Their control and hold over the party changes. And what I mean by there is everybody is never united within the context of a party. There are always factions. And sometimes there's a faction that's an established order of a faction. And that faction doesn't want to go anywhere. And when that faction is out of power, that faction complains and bitches and moans and everything else, despite pretending as if all of everything is hunky-dory and everybody is on the same side. In this case, they would prefer Trump win. Nancy Pelosi has $100 million in a bank. She will be okay. More the establishment Democrats who are part of the stuff. Did she start with a hundred okay. million? When you know before she got into co- into Congress, did she have a hundred million no, then? I don't think she did when she first got in. So she's a, she's made a hundred million since she's been in Congress. Yes. That's and a, she that's sits on thing. ethics boards and stuff like that. <laughs> That's a typical thing in the United States. That's not a shocking thing. Mate, it's honestly, I, more, <laughs> and more, 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 more and more, more and more, I find out it's happening over here. More and more, I find out it happens over here. We it's just don't so hear about it. Man. It's so grotesque. And so when I, they, from their standpoint, if Sanders wins, I mean, they've been having anti-Sanders meetings, like literally. So if Sanders wins, what does it mean to be a Democrat? And what does it mean for that third way Democrats that got rid of, you know, the New Deal Democrats? What does it mean for those guys, the moment that somebody who comes in who's an actual FDR type Democrat and means it, no bullshit, means it. And he did it in a way that you said was impossible, meaning he's calling you a fraud just by virtue of the way that he's running on race. I'm making the point that the same thing is true for Corbyn. You have people over there who would rather him lose. It is not a united front. I'm sorry. The people who are in your 
parliamentary system are not overtly hurt by, uh, by a lot of the stuff that takes place, especially if they're part of a particular class. And so, yeah, the Blairites, they're there. And on this day, on this election day abortion house, and I bet some of them are like, yes! Why? Because they know what this means. There's no way Corbyn can retain power after no. losing twice, especially this. He's and done. He's done. He's done. He's done. That's extraordinary. Like, that's a stopping. I mean, I don't, I don't just think he's done, Jamal. I think he's beaten as well. I think yeah. he's beaten. I think they've that's beaten brutal, him. man. That's a brutal um, election result. I saw that it crushed me inside. It's I mean, not just of... it's not just how they've it's not just just what's happened and how and, uh, it's how they've done it, Jamal. The, the propaganda over here. Have you fucking seen it? Yeah. You, did you see the lower country stuff? stuff is... The anti-Semitism yeah. stuff is one thing, and um, uh, you know I've been pointing out on this stream earlier about how you know Mark C C Curtis was pointing out. There's been studies of like over the last seven days. Articles of anti-Semitism and Jeremy Corbyn, like 245. Boris Johnson, Islamophobia, four. Now, well, which which one of those two people is the racist? Which one of those two people has a history of racist things said? Or which one of those two of those people, uh, people have a history of anti-racism? Yet, according to the media, it's all in the reverse, and it's the same with the war stance with the yeah. uh, Corbyn and the IRA. He was just trying yeah. to deal with the IRA. They got a deal. They would, Tories were doing what Corbyn was doing in secret anyway, um, but somehow he's the terrorist sympathizer and all terrorists Corbyn bad. But yeah. but Boris Johnson, conservatives, horrific part of foreign policy creates terrorists every single day. But you know terrorist actions going on as a result of, of, of you know terrorists who are on watch list being let out on tag and shit like that and London Bridge. They've got a terrible record on terrorism. Yet somehow you look at the media. Jeremy Corbyn, IRA, 145 articles, <laughs> and Boris Johnson and, and terrorism, or Boris Johnson in Yemen, zero. The it's, thing is, media It's an alternate a, reality. There is no such thing as objective media, and oftentimes the people who own the media are people who also pay politicians. They have a point of view of the world. All, I, I call it oligarchs, I mean, in, in the United States. Um, it creates a point of view, almost like a singular party. Like, so issues of war, tend to get, you know, if you're a warmonger, that's not as bad as if you're somebody who is not. You know, so they would hit a Gabbard, but they wouldn't necessarily hit somebody who's just a warmonger because a warmonger is a normal way of going. The Islamophobia stuff, look, societies, especially Western societies, at very least the United States, and I think the same thing is true for Britain, it may be even more true. The Jewish question is dicey. And from the standpoint of Islam, they think of it less. Now, they don't say that. Now, meaning, if you just ask somebody, hey, should somebody be, you know, racist or, or um, Islamophobic or anti-Semitic? And they would say, yeah, I don't think anybody should be either one. But if you put it in media about which one is more important, I would guarantee you, your country will say the anti-Semitic thing. I guarantee you. almost of course they will. It, because the same thing is true here. And so if anything comes up of, we think this person is anti-Semitic and there's an exact same story on the exact same day dealing with somebody else and we think this person is Islamophobic, the anti-Semitic thing is going to carry. It's going to carry. It's going to carry. Well, this, was, this, was, this was another argument that I had on, on Corbyn. It's real Corbyn bashing night tonight. I'm sorry, but I'm having fun tonight. Good bashing him. Well, I'm not having well, fun, but I'm just going to let loose because at the end of the day, that's a disastrous thing. This is one of my arguments with him, with, with, with Corbyn, with this anti-Semitic... Wait, 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 wait. I don't think this is bashing. I think this is an autopsy. No, okay. It's an autopsy. But, uh, yeah. yeah, okay, fine. Let's give it a political I agree. Cash. I agree with you. <laughs> I, you, know, I just, you know, fuck it. You know, no matter what I say, people are going to hate on me for bashing Corbyn. So you it. Okay. The, the, the thing is, with this anti-Semitism thing, what does he always say to it? Whenever so, uh, whenever they question him on anti-Semitism, what did he do? Up until recently, by the way, up until very recently, he changed his stance. But the way he answered any allegations of anti-Semitism was, we oppose anti-Semitism of all, all kinds in the Labour Party. Anti-Semitism yeah. and racism of all forms are... Like, but the thing is, what you're doing by doing that, every single time you're doing it, is confirming their narrative. Yeah, they're saying they're you're an anti-Semite. They're yeah. saying there's anti-Semitism, and you're saying we oppose that. You're conf that's the narrative. You're going along with their narrative. Whereas if they say you're an anti-Semite, you say, listen, no, you're the anti-Semite, and here's why. Because what I'm doing is conflating criticism. Uh, you, what you're doing is conflating criticism of Israel and their foreign policy with 
the will of all Jews. And that is anti-Semitic. So you're the one with the anti-Semitic tropes, not me. I am standing up for Palestine against Israeli war crimes. This has nothing to do with their religion. If he says that, he wins the fucking art argument. That's it. Hands down, he's won. He's knocked him out. Well, well, but he, instead, well, he confirms the narrative every time. I, 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 I partially agree, I think. So, yes, absolutely right. Thousand percent. What's the he best form of defense? Well, I guess my point is, it, you're right. He confirms the narrative when he does that. And you shouldn't do that. And you have to make a political decision on, OK, do I accept their narrative and deal or do I go against their narrative? And if me accepting their narrative means I lose, then the other one kind of just makes his own case. I've seen that weak response of we uh, we, we disagree with anti-Semitism in the party. Weak. You're right. You need to make this affirmative case of, no, it's not anti-Semitism. What you're doing is conflating it with Israel and Palestine. I mean, yeah, that's I agree. thousand percent agree with that part. Okay. The only part I think I disagree partially of winning the argument, because winning the argument is determined by the individual. Maybe went a little bit too far with the winning. Yeah. With the, with the winning I mean, but you get, it's a hell of a lot better than we oppose racism, yeah. which yeah. is confirming that you've, you have written their headline. Yes. You know?